Hi second graders, welcome back. Today is Monday, March 30th, and we are on Module 6, Lesson 6. Our objective for today is to decompose arrays into rows and columns and relate to repeated addition. I want to talk about this word decompose for just a second. When we decompose something, we're going to take it apart and break it down into smaller pieces. Instead of looking at the whole array, we're going to break it down into the rows or the columns that are in the array to figure out the total. Quickly, our rows, if you remember, go left to right. Rows go side to side. Think of those rows in a movie theater, the rows of seats. Columns go up and down. Okay, so when we're looking at our arrays today, don't get mixed up on which direction rows and columns go in. If you have your manipulatives or counters to work through these examples with me, go ahead and get them out. We are going to start by making four groups of three, and our groups are gonna be rows, so we're gonna make four rows of three. Go ahead and do it with me as I work through this example. Okay, here I have my array. I have my four rows of three. Now this is different from what we started earlier in module six when we were creating equal groups because our groups are kind of spaced out all over the place. When we're doing our arrays, we're putting them into an arrangement of rows and columns so that they're in order and they make a nice rectangular array. Because I made four rows of three, I really want to point out the different rows. So I'm going to go ahead and separate my rows um, with a line. So I'm going to take the first row and I'm going to separate it just by drawing a line between the first row. I'm going to do the second row, the third row, and the fourth row. Now if I wanted to find the total by working with the repeated addition equation, I would need to figure out how many counters are in each row. Looking at my first row, I have three. My second row also has three, my third row has three, and my fourth row has three. Each of the four rows has three. My repeated addition sentence would be three plus three plus three plus three. I could go ahead and find a more efficient way to add my repeated addition sentence by combining my three plus three to make six, plus three plus three makes six, and six plus six makes 12. Good job working through that one with me. Go ahead and clear up your counters as I clear up mine and we're gonna move on to example number two. For example number two, we are going to be looking at the columns when we talk about our groups. We are going to create three columns of five. Go ahead and make your counters as I work on mine. Here I have one column of five. Now I have two columns of five. And I have three columns of five. I'm going to um, separate my columns or decompose my array into columns by drawing a line in between each of the columns. Now remember, columns move up and down, so I'm going to be drawing vertical lines to separate my columns. Here's my first column, my second column, and my third column. Moving on to my repeated addition sentence to find the total, my first column has five counters, my second column has five counters, and my third column has five counters. Five plus five plus five. I could go ahead and combine five plus five to make 10, plus my leftover five for a total of 15 counters. 
So we did two examples of decomposing arrays. Our first example, we decomposed it into rows. And our second example, we decomposed it into columns. At this time, I'm going to get ready to do our daily word problem. Clear off your counters, your manipulatives, and move through this word problem with me. If you'd like to do it in your work journal, you are welcome to. Our word problem today says Charlotte is organizing her birthday cards. She has eight red cards and eight blue cards. She puts her red cards in two columns and the blue cards in two columns to make an array. The first thing I'm going to do is stop and find important information that I might need to help me solve this word problem. One thing that stands out to me is that she has eight red cards and eight blue cards. I know some are red and some are blue. Another thing that stands out to me is that she puts the red cards in two columns and the blue cards in two columns. Now before I'm even going to do any sort of math, I want to draw a picture of this just to quickly understand what Charlotte is working with. I know that she has eight red cards. I'm going to use X's to show the cards. And I know that she has eight blue cards. Okay, part A says, draw a picture of Charlotte's birthday cards in the arrays. What I have here so far are her eight red cards and her eight blue cards. I have one column of red and one column of blue. But if I go back to my word problem, it tells me that eight um, red cards are in two columns, not one, which means that I can't leave them in one column. And if I'm using my math thinking, I know my columns have to be equal. So I'm going to have to take the eight red cards and split them up somehow. I'm using the doubles fact for eight. I know that four plus four makes eight. So I'm going to actually take four of the red cards and I'm going to create a new second column. Now she's got four red cards in a column and four red cards in her second column. Same with the blue cards. I know the blue cards are also in two columns. So I'm going to have to split up four and four with my blue. I'm going to create a second column of blue cards. Now I have an array to match the word problem for Charlotte and her birthday cards. Part B says write a statement about Charlotte's array. Before I write my statement, I would like to come up with a repeated addition sentence to find the total for how many birthday cards Charlotte has. My first column of birthday cards has four, plus the second column has four, plus the third column has four, plus the fourth column has four. If I add up 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, I would get a total of 16 cards. And if I was going to write a statement about Charlotte and her birthday cards, it would be Charlotte has 16 cards. Thank you for tuning in today for Module 6, Lesson 6. You can drop below into the video description to find the word problem typed out there for you if you'd like to work through it in your work journal or see it more closely. Check back in tomorrow for Module 6, Lesson 6. Bye!